Hi folks, welcome to the next edition of Serverless Crack with myself, Dave Anderson. I'm a technical fellow at Bizarre Voice and author and contributor at the Serverless Edge. Hi everyone, I'm Mark McCann, Architect at Globalization Partners and author and contributor at the Serverless Edge. Hey everyone, Michael O'Reilly, um, Software Architect with Globalization Partners and contributor with the Serverless Edge. And guess what? We have a book coming out. Ta-da! So we've spent the last couple of episodes um, talking about the value flywheel effect and, and the, the, the value flywheel itself. And as we were saying, this got four phases in it. Um, clarity of purpose, challenge, next best action, and long-term value. And we've been talking through each of these phases in detail. And today we're going to talk about phase four, which is long-term value. So the simple question is, what is long-term value? Oh, wow. Great question. Um, yeah, so we talked about the, the flywheel and it's all about keeping momentum, keeping going. Um, so over time, I mean, how do you keep going in a sustainable fashion? You know, how do you keep going where you're you're always focused on the next best thing, the next best action? Well, um, this part of the flywheel kind of talks about some ways in order to kind of do that, maintain that momentum, you know, um, keep that ability to focus on what's coming next through various techniques. We, we talk quite a bit. You know, Mark Dave around the importance of well architected and you know making sure what we are building is set up um, for the future. You know, um, ten years down the line or two months down the line, you don't want to be having to go back and tweak and revisit and invest loads of time on on ops and stuff like that. So, the well architected is and and this portion of the flywheel is really it's a wee bit of discipline, isn't it? It's a wee bit of rigor that what we do, a wee bit of investment into engineering excellence, that sort of thing. Um, so I guess that that would be maybe the TLDR kind of view of it. From I think, yeah, I think it can can uh, the long term value is if you do nothing right now, if you if you continue to deliver value over the medium to long term because you've invested in a sustainable way of working, you've invested in like Michael says, well architected, you've you've paid down your technical debt, so you're going to get that long term value. You're not going to you know, hit the wall in the short term because you've not built-in quality, that you've not architected appropriately, that you've not built for a sustainable solution, right? So I think as we go forward, we want to make sure that all of our systems are built so that they deliver long-term value. And you got to have that rigor, that discipline. Um, and yep. you got you to do it continuously and iteratively. You can't just do it. Oh, we'll do it at the end. It's got to be something that you bake into your flavor. No, you can't do it at the end. And the, here, the, the big thing here is really it's architecture as, as a, as a, a, cont a continuous practice and we, we talk about um, well-architected and, and specifically probably the well-architected um, framework from AWS, which has got six pillars. Uh, and if you bake these things in continuously, always look at them, there's, there's a huge amount of value. And it's, it's architecture used to be this weird thing no one understood, but it's, it's actually quite straightforward. It's security, cost optimization, operational excellence, reliability, performance, and sustainability. That's a new one, sustainability, that you have low carbon in your workload. So SCORPS is our little acronym that we've been using. So, I mean, that that's really, there's an awful lot of goodness in those uh, six simple pillars. Yeah. So let's extend that. So why is it important? It's a question, please. Well, I think if, if you don't invest in long-term value, if you don't invest in the things we articulated, the well-architected framework and, and things like it, you'll hit the wall. You know, you might go fast for a quarter or two or a sprint or two, but sooner or later, that's going to catch up with you. And, you know, you may be, oh, we're going really fast. We're delivering loads of value, but you're not actually doing it in a sustainable way. You're not paying down those debts. You're not actually building things that are resilient and scalable and performant and cost-effective. So you may go fast for a few sprints, a few months, even a few years, but eventually that catches up with you and then you crash, you stop, right? You, you can't deliver any value anymore. We always say it's it's what you're doing is you're creating space for innovation. Yeah. And again, they make that a bit more straightforward. It's it's called the, the ILC cycle. It's your um, innovate, leverage, and commoditize. So when you're turning the, the flywheel, I mean your 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 idea might be this innovative idea, and then you build that quickly. You can leverage it. If it's well architected, there's more chance you can commoditize that and move on to the next cycle. But um, and and that's really what it is. You can kind of Put that square that away and and get ready for that for that next sort of Im impactful thing. And if you build well, you'll be able to do that. 
but that's why it's it's you're you're effectively building quality in so you can go again as it were which is again that whole concept of you can run it for your next turn of the flywheel you can look at okay what's what's yeah. what's the the new clarity purpose or what else do we need to do yeah totally and if if, if you invest in this you'd have your your people thinking about and working towards delivering differentiating value instead of firefighting um you know, solving issues you know trying to you know see why things don't work or you know uh, resolving sort of customer issues right because you've invested in this so you do have much more capacity for much more impactful meaningful differentiating work not just run work not just busy work to keep the lights on of, of what you currently have yeah and i mean it, not to get too philosophical but it's like you're so you're always going to have unknown unknowns there's things that will happen that will take you by surprise but some of the things that we talk about here they're known unknowns if you don't look after reliability performance and security something's going to happen you know it's, it's just that's just a fact so you're better to square them away early and then you can focus on the stuff that you no one ever thought of yeah and even one of the, the most basic ones among one of the pillars we we really love is the operational excellence do you have observability do you even know where your value is coming from? Do you know where your next uh, round of value is coming from? Good observability helps point you in the right direction for where you should invest in this next wave of um, well-architected or uh, improvements that, that keep the flywheel turning. So, yeah, there's there's tons in this. Yeah, and even our, our We Jimmy story, we built this fantastic system and We Jimmy knows how it works. We Jimmy is a genius. We Jimmy doesn't need to document anything. We Jimmy's just left the company and no one knows how it works. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, it is, it's such a like, um, like I mean, and speaking from our own experience with it, I kind of think the you know a lot of the challenge here at this space is is getting teams embedded with it, you know, getting them into a cadence with it, you know, getting them to adopt it. But when when that does happen, it does you know it does free up architecture, it does it does give teams a wee bit more autonomy, it does fuel the overarching. Yeah. kind of environment you know like so when you're looking at the broader cloud controls the, the broader constraints you know building a more functional productive organization it definitely drives all that up yeah uh, so definitely it means you don't have to have an architect in every squad for example you know you're kind of you can kind of scale out that way as well you know so you're again it's all about efficiency all about throughput you know all about kind of looking after the longer term you know making sure you're productive yeah, it really does democratize a lot of those architectural concerns and enables the teams to think about them in a way that's productive and useful and they're enjoyable for them right whenever we take teams through this they really get it and they really enjoy it and they really embrace it and they see the value it brings and they see the improvements that it makes and they see how their lives become infinitely better because they're not uh, they're not chasing their tail trying to firefight uh, issue after issue right so it's, it's mm. you know it really does if you do this right it really goes right into the teams and really enables and empowers the teams to deliver well architected solutions that can help deliver that long term value that you're looking for. Yeah, definitely. But like uh, every team does need an architect. Who's, who's going to draw the pictures? What happens then? Uh, yeah. the engineers need to draw the pictures by themselves. Who's going to draw on the whiteboard? That's it. Just enough design. Isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, keep moving. And so, what, I'm, what happens if we don't do it? I mean, we've all seen that. I, you always see teams in this kind of false economy that if they don't do this stuff, you can get your first or second build in really quickly and it seems great. But then things start going wrong and you start sort of, you build up technical debt very, very quickly and things start to go wrong. So you end up firefighting and it really, really slows down. So it's almost like it's the, the perfect velocity thing. You can start off quite fast, but it starts to slow down rapidly as things start to creak. Anything else you can think of that, that happens if you don't think about this? Well, your 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 business and your your execs and your key stakeholders start to wonder why why am I not getting value out of my teams anymore? What, where's where's the next differentiating capability? Where's my next feature or my next uh, capability that can differentiate us in the marketplace? Uh, and they they go there and like, well, I've got the same teams and you know, they were good last month. Why, why are they not delivering this month? Or they were good last year. Why are they not delivering this year? So you, you'll you'll have a lot of um, noise. From the from the exact show, why why is it not working anymore? Yeah, my my experience is showing that you know, like most most modernizations, you'll be dealing with part of the the org that maybe doesn't leverage well architected. You may have kind of you know heritage style apps, and again, those are all good and good at what they do. But if you look at the run grow type numbers across, say that part of the organization versus 
say a well architected area of the organization or application, you, you will see that the the grow side on the you know the well architected, you know, um serverless first, whatever, you know, whatever you're doing there around, you know, kind of follow say the flyway, the, the grow is what is higher, much higher than mm. than than the run. Whereas on the other, the older side we're maybe not doing it, the the run is kind of probably just compete for the grow capacity. So you do, you actually do see that in the, in the numbers, you know, because, you know, obviously in the stuff that we're preaching about is we delegating as much as possible to the cloud provider, you know, mm. averaging good, well-architected agile practices to always be focusing on adding value and less about kind of, you know, run or less tasks that don't add value. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, if you don't, if you're not doing it, you aren't, you are going to struggle to outrun or, you know, your growth is going to always struggle against the, yeah. the run costs, you know. Um, one of the other big ones is that your teams typically know the business as well as anybody in the business. They are part of the business, right? And if they yeah. don't invest in this type of long-term value, they'll be spending all their cycles doing things that you know, aren't innovative, that aren't creative, that aren't going to you know, help your business grow. They're going to be doing stuff just to keep the lights on. Um, so you're missing out on a massive amount of innovation and value that they could add because they've, because they've done this right, the freed up capacity, the freed up cycles, they actually think about the future, think about what's next, think about the, you know, the the uh, opportunities on the horizon, right? Mm. Even the other problem is uh, the, the dreaded rewrite. After a couple of years in, like you realize yep. that this big ball of mud just needs somebody to take a sledgehammer to it, and then you 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 turn around and talk to your stakeholders, say we're, we're going to we're going to do a next generation version of this. Mm. It's going to be brilliant. And what function? We'll have the same functionality, but it'll be better. Like, well, why would I pay you to build it again? You built it again. You built this five years ago. Why are we building it again? That's a very difficult conversation. And the answer is never, yeah, we didn't bother doing architecture, so we have to build it again. That's not, that's not a good place to be. And I think it, it, it all ties together with the entire flyway, right? Once you have that clarity of purpose, once you have that good environment for challenge and the psychological safety to do it, once you understand what the next best action should be, you can start to invest in the long-term value because you can see what key input metrics is going to start influencing. You can see what, what you're trying to improve as the flywheel turns. So it's critical yeah. to have you know, all of these together because your long-term value is really about how can we turn the flywheel faster? How can we improve the metrics better? How can we you know, deliver more value more quickly to our, to, our, to, our, to our users, to our customers? I think it's something I was here, Mark, you, you saying, or, and again, I'm probably going to butcher this, but team that's kind of leveraging or operating say in the way of the of the flywheel as we describe it their their software should be almost appreciating in in, in value in over time as opposed to depreciating you know so if you're if you're not doing it it will if you're not kind of um thinking about long-term value and some of the ways we've been talking about your system is always going to be depreciated in terms of you don't have to invest you have to you know constantly patch in constantly kind of upgrading constantly kind of you know uh dealing with issues yeah, that sort of stuff i think the, the term we use the code is a liability the system is the asset you want your teams focusing on the system delivering the value and removing as many code liabilities as they can and this phase yeah. of the flywheel is all about how can we minimize our liabilities how can we offload more of that responsibility to the cloud provider how can we um you know leverage money services more leverage SaaS providers more you know how can we remove some of the custom built stuff that we have and evolve it to something that's more um, more of a commodity so all yeah. of those things play in the this phase of the flywheel and i certainly find when, you, <clears throat> when you've got your kind of ar architect architect eyes when you look at something <clears throat> if the system you can spot when the system isn't built well for long-term value <clears throat> you just know it's i don't know it's a the software engineering thing you just know if something's not built well you just get this kind of feeling you go, that that doesn't feel right. It's and sometimes it's hard to put your finger on it. And it's very hard to sometimes explain to more junior engineers why something's not right, but just saying like this is going to be a disaster in two years' time. I don't know what I get a feeling when I see that stuff. It's sometimes it's hard to put into words, but the answer is you haven't you're not thinking about long term value, you're just thinking about the delivery date at the end of this month or whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the crack. That's the whole flywheel effect, all our four phases. Um Clarity purpose and uh, challenge, next best action, and long term value. Book is out in November 2022. So um, have a look at the blog on the serverlessedge.com and on Twitter at the serverless edge and give us a wee uh, look on YouTube and the podcast as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye.